We're all bracing ourselves for the dry, hot months ahead. But one of the most dramatic and potentially catastrophic consequences of the El Nino weather phenomenon, in fact, takes place underwater on the world's coral reefs. And in this week's edition of Spotlight, Tan Chui joins the researchers who are keeping a close watch on the reefs in our waters. Busy shipping lanes and silty waters, far from the tropical paradise you normally associate with coral reefs. But you don't have to take a leap of faith to see corals in one of the world's busiest ports. It's not the best weather conditions. Eight kilometers south of mainland Singapore, we're just off the island of Sumacau. At 350 hectares, this reclaimed island is also Singapore's offshore landfill but there are corals in these waters. Most of Singapore's reefs are located on the fringes of its southern islands. Coral cover today is only about 40% of what the country had in the 1950s. Most of it lost to coastal development, land reclamation and seabed dredging over the past 50 years. What remains is threatened by more reclamation to meet land use demands by 2030. But for now, marine biologists have a more pressing global threat to deal with. Underwater, researchers from the National University of Singapore survey the natural reef off Samaka. Visibility is on the low side, but there's life in the murk. Most of the corals were quite okay. Uh, less than 5%, I would say, were bleaching. That's good news. But marine biologists fear a return of the mass coral bleaching that took place in 1998 and 2010, when the region was swept by unusually warm seawater, a result of El Nino. Experts say this disruptive weather phenomenon is likely to hit again in 2014. We are seeing warmer than usual conditions throughout the entire tropical or equatorial Pacific Ocean. Uh, it is greater than 0 0.5 degrees Celsius uh, compared to the long-term average, which is a precursor of uh, El Nino conditions. The warmth from the Pacific Ocean extends all the way towards the South China Sea and also into uh, our part of the world in Southeast Asia. In healthy conditions, algae living on coral tissue absorb the sun's energy and produce food for the algae as well as their coral hosts. When the water gets too warm, the algae produces harmful toxins. As a result, coral polyps expel the coloured algae and turn white, the actual colour of coral tissue. Coral can survive bleaching, but lack of food from the algae causes stress and makes it more prone to disease. So prolonged bleaching can kill entire reefs. Whether El Nino will happen more often from now on remains a question for climatologists. But there are signs extreme weather is the new normal. There are some folks. The baseline conditions have changed. Uh, what we considered in the past to be extreme events could likely to be uh, normal events going forward in the future. So that uh, so more droughts or higher temperatures that would be a concern um, going forward. Recently, corals in Singapore waters, especially those closer to the water surface, have started to show signs of stress. There's not much you can do to stop corals from bleaching if and when it happens because it's all about the temperatures of the oceans around us. But what the researchers here are doing can help them find ways to improve the long-term survival chances of Singapore corals. Since 1997, university researchers have been collecting coral fragments and growing them on man-made coral nurseries of Pulau Semakau. The nursery anchors the fragments in a sheltered environment, allowing them to grow larger and stronger before they're transplanted. First, we want to study the responses of these corals to bleaching uh, and thermal stress, as well as uh, to move some of these fragments, coral fragments, into nursery sites with higher water flow. So this helps reduce the effect of uh, thermal stress. So in the event where the reefs on the, the corals on the reefs are being wiped out, we can use this as a transplant material to recolonize the reef. Around the world, coral reefs are in decline. 
But despite facing the double whammy of coastal development and climate change, Singapore's reefs continue to survive, giving scientists hope. The two major bleaching events in 1998 and 2010, we did see a dip in coral cover, amount of corals on the reef. But then they recovered several years later. Now, um, this kind of long-term monitoring data gives us the ability to pick up these signals. So we know that there is a chance that uh, if there's another bleaching event now, our corals have a good chance of recovering because they've shown that in the past two decades. It is not something that's obvious to people, but it basically means we have reefs that you can probably keep on diving at for a long time to come. The resilience of Singapore's coral reefs lie in their diversity, which lowers the risk of entire reefs being wiped out. There are about 250 coral species here, out of 600 for the whole of Southeast Asia. And there could be more. Marine biologists have only scratched the surface of what's underwater. There's so many new species that haven't been either discovered or recorded in Singapore. We don't really have a good grasp of what we have. And if we lose it faster than we get that information, then we lose a whole body of knowledge that's there. Studying how and why Singapore's reefs survive and adapt to warmer seas could well offer answers to coral conservation efforts here and elsewhere. We don't know. But if we lose the reefs, we'll never find out.